Hello and welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. I'm Dana Cowley, your host for today's segment, and our team is conducting interviews at the Port of Walla Walla. We're grateful for the opportunity to be here in this beautiful facility. And my guest today is Carrie Isaacson. She's the Executive Director from the Blue Mountain Community Foundation. Thank you for joining us, Carrie. Thanks for the opportunity. You just received a large donation, and tell us a little bit how that will go with what you have and how it will be used, please. Well, we have uh, we just received $1.3 million, our second million dollar gift for this year. And for community foundations, we have a dual purpose, really, and one is to improve the community by growing the largest charitable resource or asset that we can. And so now we're up to $40 million. And then on the other side is to disperse money in grants and in scholarships to improve the community from which the money came. So where does most of the money come from, your donations? Where is that stream? Primarily from individuals. And people give outright, they give through charitable trusts, they give through their wills and estates. And then is it primarily in this area, I assume, agricultural and wine or? Well, we're really blessed here. Yes, it's an agricultural area, but we're pretty diverse in the kinds of things that we make. Uh, it's primarily wheat. So the, the wealth, it's a very wealthy area. We cover Garfield, Columbia, Walla Walla, and Umatilla County. Umatilla is in Oregon. It's the whole Blue Mountain region. So then when you go to disperse your charitable donations, what's the criteria and what different categories do you have? It's really a mix. Um, community foundations are quite complex. And we're complex so that we can be responsive to what our donors want. So sometimes our donors say, here's a fund and I want you to support the Humane Society forever. So every year we write a check to the Humane Society. They don't have to ask for it. They don't have to tell us what they use it for. Uh, and other donors will say, I want a donor advised fund. I'm going to put in, say, $50,000 right now and then I'm going to decide over the next year or two where exactly I want that 50000 to go. Oh. And so they tell us, and then our board approves it and makes those, those gifts. And then on others, donors have left it up to our board completely. And we're all volunteer board with many community members who are also volunteers. And they look at proposals and they make uh, decisions based on a lot of different criteria. We try to be as responsive to community needs as we can and those change over time and that's really our, our whole purpose. So what are some of the key community needs this year in 2016 and going into 27 that you foresee coming up? Well always um, helping the poor and disadvantaged is uh, top of mind. We also are helping young people by investing in them through scholarships. So this year we were able to give about $420,000 worth of scholarships oh, into in a rural area like this. Yes, it, that, that makes a, a, a lot of difference. Um, we also find that there's a lot of opportunity to help give voice to people in our community that might not be really active in political things. Uh, we give what we're doing now in partnership with United Way and several other charities like the Sherwood Trust which is another local foundation, we're holding a series of community conversations where we are really trying to elicit from Dayton in Columbia County to Walla Walla to Milton Freewater in Umatilla, we're trying to gather as much public input about what's really great about living here and then what needs to be improved. And uh, the city and the county will use that as they put together 10 year long plans it's starting to sound kind of wonky, but it's very important to have public input into policies, zoning decisions, that kind of thing. And then all of us grant makers are going to use what the community says they think is most important in our grant making of the future. Well, no, I think that's just good grassroots service. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you need to ask somebody what they want to need in order to really know how to deliver. So do you have a feel or a pulse for what people are coming forth and saying as you initiate these kinds of meetings, key, key concerns? The, some of the concern is on uh, education and the achievement gap. We have many kids who are doing great, and we have a lot of kids that are not doing so well early childhood education to help the very youngest kids so that they're ready for kindergarten, that's yes. a big deal. And another one is security. You know, how secure do people feel? And it, it's, it goes from traffic patterns to crime. 
and it's I, I don't think that's a surprise uh, to to any of the places where we live. No, we all need to feel safe. Yeah. <laughs> and, and another carry on from there. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dana. Oh no. Uh, another important thing that we're very enthusiastic about is to better connect with our Hispanic and Latino communities. And so all of the public meetings we're having also are bilingual, has si simultaneous translation, um, has childcare, food. I mean, that, that helps increase the participation by everybody. It really does. Yeah. And that's inviting everyone so yeah. people can participate. Well, Carrie, thank you for coming thank in you. and telling us about these things. And I wish you good luck thank with you very your much. efforts toward this. This is Carrie Isaacson. I'm Dana Cowley, and you're watching Charter Local Edition Northwest. <laughs>